But let's let's make sure we keep that in mind when we're judging Bryce Young the next couple weeks. Joining us now is a man who probably have all the answers to every question we have around the NFL, including what the hell are the Chiefs going to look like this evening? Senior NFL insider for the ESPN, also host of his own podcast named after himself, the Adam Schefter Podcast. Here's Adam Schefter. Yay! Yay! Gentlemen, great to be with you. And let me just say this. AJ shot is incredibly well lit. He's framed beautifully. <laughs> it looks outstanding. AJ, great job there. Smart play. Did Thank you get you, a, Shefty. Did you get a full was there a memo sent to all email uh, all <laughs> ESPN employees? Hey, there is a uh, reframing that happened in an attic in Ohio, causing a little bit of ripple effect here. But Shefty, congrats. We made it to the NFL season, baby. Yep. How about that? How about that, right? 157 days away from the Super Bowl. Here we go tonight. It's always the start of a marathon. It's another marathon that begins tonight. It'll be a great race. Okay, so let's uh, let's talk about the race as they started with some fireworks. Nick Bosa, biggest deal in the history of the NFL on the defensive side. $34 million a year. $122.5 million guaranteed. $170 as a total there. And then yeah. I think I listened to you talk on NFL Live last night where you were telling a story about somebody went into a press conference thinking that the Bosa-Niners deal was far away, and then just moments later the deal got done. I don't know if I misheard you or not. Did this deal come out of nowhere? And who gave, you think, to get this thing done? Well, here's what happened. Essentially, in the morning, both sides, both sides thought that they were a ways away, far apart from getting a deal done. The exact language that was used to me was huge gaps, huge gaps between the two sides. And the Niners have been despondent about this particular negotiation and very concerned about the way it was going. And they really believed that Nick Bosa wasn't going to make it back in time for the game on Sunday at Pittsburgh. And so Kyle Shanahan was getting ready to meet the media and they had their vice president of media relations, Corey Rush in there debriefing him, saying some of the things that he should be answering about the Nick Bosa situation. Now, nothing different to tell you guys. Very sorry. Wish we had him. And then literally the news drops. It's on Twitter. There it is. Nick Bosa, new deal, gets the deal done. And so the Niners find out. And I think what happened here is ultimately – the two sides can negotiate all they want. They could feel they're far apart all they want. But I think in the end, Nick Bosa has to say, I want to be there for my team. It's important for me to be there with my guys. We've taken this far enough. Let's go and get this done. And I think he gives the directive in the end, hey, I'm taking this deal. It's a record deal. I'm the richest defensive player in NFL history. Richest non-quarterback deal in NFL history, right? Yes. So, so just like T.J. Watt, who kicked in the door to get the deal done, Nick Bosa said, hey, Suits, listen, I appreciate where you've gotten me. <laughs> $34 million a year is good. I'm going back with my teammates. I got four sacks to give this weekend. They assume he's in great shape, ready to go, right? I'll take it from here. That's exactly what Nick Bosa said. And, yes, that's a guy that works out so much that they feel like he's in better shape than he would be if you were at training camp. And Kyle Shanahan said the only way he doesn't play – is if he showed up there this morning with a beer belly, which isn't happening, as we know. Would be so, sweet, though. Yeah. Yeah. That would be sweet. He signed for $122.5 million guarantee. Uh, all right, sorry, James Harden and I. We, yeah, it's fun. I just got to get back into shape here. Last question for me. Congrats to the Niners and the Bosa getting that deal done. It's a huge thing. Last question for me before AJ and the boys have one here. Obviously, Travis Kelsey, all eyes on Travis. We assume the Chris Jones ship has sailed, at least for this evening. Who knows how close they are. Even though he and McDonald's were able to get a deal done, yep. he and the Chiefs yeah. not able to get a deal done. What'd you say? Did you get any information? Right no, no, it, froze, it froze up there. It froze up there on me, Pat. I don't know if it was AJ's shot that interfered with my shot there or what the deal was. But anyway, you just came clean. And I think I know the question because I was prepared for this question. I made some calls thinking that you would ask about Travis Kelsey in advance. Boom. And basically, he's told some people last night he thinks he's going to play. The issue is he wants to play. He thinks he can play. They're going to work him out pregame. And essentially, in the end, the Chiefs trainer, Rick Burkholder, is going to make the final call about whether or not Travis Kelsey winds up playing here. And I think that he feels like he can go, but they also, if they didn't play him, would have 10 days to rest him up, get him ready. He's got a bone bruise on the knee, very painful to have to play through. So I don't know that there's an answer right now about whether he's going to go. Travis Kelsey probably thinks he's going to play and wants to play. But Rick Burkholder, the team's trainer, may put a kibosh to that in pregame warm-ups, depending on how that knee is feeling and how he's looking. We love you, Travis. We hope to see you tonight. But also, if they hold you out, I think we all understand completely. Yeah. Go ahead, AJ. Shefty, uh, is there any update on Chandler Jones out in Vegas and whatever's going on between he and the team? Well, did you see last night that Chandler Jones posted videos of a crisis response team 
showing up at his front door. He posted those images. So clearly, if we're going to look at those images that he posted, we have to assume that the Raiders are concerned about him. And he himself wrote, Raiders sent her to my place. You need to come with us. You're in danger. So the team, in his own words, feels like he's in danger. And Chandler Jones continues to scoff and be disappointed at how the Raiders are handling the situation. Again, looking at it from afar, it certainly seems like they're concerned about his well-being. If they're sending somebody from a crisis response team to his front door to go get him, that tells you that this is a, I think, a very serious situation. And you hope that he work, you hope that he's okay. That's the most important thing here. And we'll see where it goes from this point on. Chandler, we're all big fans, brother. We hope you're okay. Obviously, everybody's on your side. Uh, him posting that would make you think that he is in enough cognizance to understand what's going on. So who knows how that whole situation ends. We hope we get a chance to see him on a football field. So good at football, mm -hmm. Shefty. Yeah. Yeah. So great. Good. So good. You look at his We stat. hope he's okay. Yes, yeah, exactly. We, hope, okay. we all hope he is completely okay. The boys have some questions for you. Go ahead, Darius. Yes. Yeah, I'll start with my Dolphins, man. Down there in Miami, got some questions. Any movement with Christian Wilkins getting his deal and then the uh, the health of uh, our tackle, Toronto Armstead? Any, any update there? Well, in regards to Christian Wilkins, they're not going to get a deal done before the season. I think he's accepted that. I think they've accepted that. I think he's ready to play with Miami. They've basically put aside the negotiations. So any hopes – about a deal, I think have been dashed for now. Again, he talked about the fact that he wants to be there. We'll see if they can work something out in time, but there's going to be no deal before the start of the season. It doesn't sound like there's any talks planned for the start of the season as well. Teron Armstead, I think his status is in question, in doubt for oh, Sunday's man. opener, which would be a blow to the Dolphins offensive oh, line oh, against oh, the no. Chargers. We'll see whether he can make it back in time. Oh. I have my own doubts personally. But that guy's a great player when he's out there. He's a great leader. He's somebody you want in your locker room. But it looks like they may be without him week one. Well, hey, we hope we don't have to learn about Tua's jujitsu in yeah. week one. But Ooh. losing an offensive lineman Ooh. whenever the whole conversation is pretty much, if we can keep Tua healthy, mm -hmm. we're good. Hope all parties figure it out down there. Tone's got a question for you, Shefty. Yeah, Shefty, from the outside, um, when you have to go to Minnesota to see a, spe a hamstring specialist – Cooper Cup uh, going there. What's the situation there? It doesn't. It feels like it does. It might be more than one week. What's your read on the situation? Well, Sean McVay yesterday said that they're going to consider putting him on IR, and I think some of this here is they, they don't know why he's having the hamstring issues, the muscle muscle issues, and I think sometimes as an athlete, when you're used to performing at a top peak level, you get concerned when your body doesn't feel right. It just hasn't felt right to him, and. I think they feel like they're going to get him back and they've been preparing for the possibility that this could happen. Look, early in camp, he suffered the first hamstring strain. They had to go on without him. So they got guys like Van Jefferson and Tutu Atwell uh, up to speed, Tyler Higby, Cam Akers, Kyron Williams. And now they're without him again. They sent up the specialist. They want to make sure he's right. And I don't think he's right physically. And it makes him, I think, uncomfortable in his own mind that he's not right. So when you have those two factors together, he's out Sunday. It certainly sounds like they're going to put him on IR potentially, and we'll see whether or not they follow through with that plan. How do the Rams feel about this year, honestly? I think, first of all, as amazing as this is, they are one of the three youngest teams in the NFL, with the Packers and the Colts. Like We know that the Colts and Packers are starting from scratch, but who would think that the Rams – their average age would be just over 25 years per player. And if you took Cooper Cup out of there, it would be even younger. They have a ton of young players. Now, I think that Sean McVay comes into the season completely revitalized and completely aware that there's a challenge that awaits. And I think they think, they think they're going to surprise people. They think they're going to be better than people realize. They essentially would love to have Cooper Cup but there's something about not having him and trying to rise up to that challenge as well that I think yeah. motivates this team. Now, again, yeah. we all look at this team. Like I said, young. They've been through a lot. I don't think you look at them as one of the elite teams in the NFC, but I think they think 
that they're going to be better than people realize. They need to and put, we'll find out. They need to put Stetson Bennett at wide receiver. Just get him <laughs> on the get field. Him out there. That's what they need. Need him on the field. Go ahead, AJ. Shefty, uh, are there any uh, injury reports we need to worry about for the Lions tonight? And also, like, what do you think it would mean for the Lions as an organization and Dan Campbell if they were able to win this game tonight? Now, can you imagine what it would be like? Because we've, sp- we've talked so much about the Lions and their hopes and expectations. And if they beat the defending champs on their home field and then had 10 days to talk about it and live it up, oh, my, that would be awfully fun for Detroit. Hell yeah, um, man. Hell yeah. I mean, they're, Hell yeah. They're, 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 they're pretty healthy going into tonight with the exception of Emmanuel Mosley, who was ruled out, who I don't think they were counting on having for this game anyway. So no real surprises there. Um, obviously, we know no Jamison Williams as well. He's gone for the first six games of the year. But this Lions team is excited about the show. I can tell you this. I know they're very curious about Travis Kelsey's status for tonight, like everybody else. That's awesome. Uh, Do you get text? About okay, that. so hold on. You get texts from people, huh? In the league, they're like, what do you know? Who's telling you what? <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, people want to know if he's playing tonight. Yeah, a lot we, of people. We do too. Please. Yeah, Shefty. I mean, and I don't think, like I said, I don't think the Chiefs know yet. I think, again, Kelsey told some people, yes, I think I'm going to play. I think I'm going to play. But we'll see whether or not Rick Burkholder puts the kibosh on that in pregames. I, that is such a big time decision yeah. because, like, Banner Night's a big night for yep. a team. But also, we got 16 more games. Mm-hmm. Here. You're our guy, which obviously would lend to a showcase of Patrick Mahomes and the conversation would be without Travis Kelsey, he does this entire thing. Or the Lions come in there and get a massive win without Travis Kelsey, so then that'll just get held over your head. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah, that's what people say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, that's listen. what people say. No, so, we are the Detroit Chris Jones, Lions. Chris Jones is in a suite uh, at yeah, exactly. That's okay. He's not playing. That's sorry. okay. That's what people say. No, they won't because we're the Detroit Lions. We will take any W possible at any time oh. ever in franchise history. Okay. People well, say that. You, Foxy. So. Sorry, buddy. Connor has a question for you, Shefty. Yeah, Shefty, we yes, haven't Scott. really heard much out of the Jonathan Taylor camp as of late. Is there any action going there, or should we expect something after he is off the pup list in a few weeks, or is there a possibility that something gets worked out here over the first two weeks of the season? Anything always could happen. My guess is that he's going to be on pup for a few weeks, and we see how the season plays out. And inevitably, there usually is somebody that is in need of a playmaking running back at some point. If we go back to last year, the 49ers would not have opened the season thinking that they wanted to trade for Christian McCaffrey. Even when they were talking to the Panthers about Christian McCaffrey, they weren't sure that they wanted to give up everything that they had to ultimately a two, three, four, and five to go get them. And then it's hard to imagine the 49ers today without Christian McCaffrey. So what I think happens here with Jonathan Taylor is the Colts have asked for too much. Teams have been scared off so far. Nobody's been interested, but inevitably there may be a team out there, a contending winning playoff caliber team that opens the season. That's out to a three and one start, a, 2-0 2-0 and star, and they lose a running back, or they felt like they need some juice at the running back position. I still think a Jonathan Taylor trade is in play, and the window obviously is open until October 30. I don't think you're going to see a Jonathan Taylor trade this week, or this week, but I still think a Jonathan Taylor trade will be in play before the NFL trade deadline on October 31st. Maybe for like Jalen Waddle or something like that. We appreciate you so much, (laughs) Shefty. Anything else we should ask you about quick? Well, we know Chris Jones isn't playing tonight, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's he's going to be in a suite, allegedly. Yeah. Good good food in the suite, I'm sure. Some good barbecue yeah. there for him. Wait, well, he's going to be at and, and, Yeah. He's gonna be at and at some game. point, you'd, you'd like to think there'd be some conversations like up close and personal. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.